Here we go. Today's giveaway is the RGB bundle. That's MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, and MAPS Performance. You are talking about the favorite programs for me, Adam, and Justin. Those are our favorite programs. Put together in a bundle, and you can get it for free, but you got to do the following. Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to all three of those workout programs. Also, big sale going on right now in December. MAPS HIT, which is High Intensity Interval Training, is 50% off. And MAPS SPLIT, this is a bodybuilder-style advanced split routine, is also 50% off. So huge discount. If you're interested, head over to, to mapsfitnessproducts.com. But you got to use this code, DEC50, for that 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. You looking to get lean? Well, you might need to bulk first in order to make that happen. All right, let's talk about this. I know, right? Is it backwards advice? Yeah, yeah. wait a minute. I want to get lean, but I got to bulk. Are we in, yeah, we're in backwards land. Yeah, no, you know, uh, this, is, this is good advice for a lot of people because when you're getting lean, you have to eat less calories than you, than you burn, right? You got to cut your calories. But people don't think beyond once they hit their goal, right? You want to be able to cut your calories to a point where the maintenance calories now when you're lean is something you can sustain. And so if you're going to cut your calories and they're low and hard for you to maintain, you're screwed. So bulking, <coughs> speed the metabolism, build some muscle, kind of like a reverse diet, gives you more room to do the cut afterwards. So I like that advice, but I'm going to take it a step further. I think that uh, there's tremendous value in in doing the opposite of whatever you tend to do, no matter which side of the fence you're on. Meaning, oh, that's true. Yeah. Like how I mean, and I know you like can interrupting the process. I know you can definitely relate to this because you and I were both the same way. We were on a, we were on a permanent bulk for most of our lives, Always. right? Because we had this insecurity about being skinny. So I was always bulking and, you know, one of the best things I ever did in pursuit of the bulk was actually run a cut for a while because I had never really done that. And one, I got leaner and quote unquote smaller, but I got the compliments my insecure ass was looking for forever, which was, oh my God, you look so big. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is crazy. Yeah, I lost um, 15 pounds. Yeah, I lost 15 pounds. I'm getting all these, these, these comments. And then when I went back into the bulk, my body just responded amazing and so and i think the same thing is true is for the kid or the guy or girl who struggled with uh, weight loss their whole life they've always been 40 50 pounds overweight they're if they're either not paying attention at all or they're on a strict diet and they're mm -hmm. trying to cut taking that person and saying hey let's start to yeah. add food to your diet let's try and build some muscle let's put you on a bulk even though you want to lose 50 pounds first and then cut so i i think uh, even better advice is to evaluate what do you typically do all the time, and then maybe even potentially? Yeah, do I'm glad you. I'm glad you clarified. Because, and by the way, bulk is not just eating a bunch of garbage. Right. And it, when we when we're what we're referring to when we say bulk is eating in a slur, surplus that allows you to build lean body mass, but not too much body fat. So it's a small surplus, you know, clean bulk or whatever you want to call it. And you have to pair that with effective strength training or resistance training. Speeds up the metabolism. You get your maintenance calories. In other words, the calories that require your body requires to stay the same, to go up, 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 up. And then when you cut, you got all this room to cut calories. And then what you said about like how you, what you and I experienced, I noticed this incredible resensitizing effect yeah. to calories. Like I would just eat more and eat more. And it got to the point where it was like, I got to eat 4,000 plus calories to make anything move. Then I went on an actual cut, just like you did, which took me a long time to even attempt. I got lean, and then it was like the most sensitive my body had ever become to calories, and I was able to build muscle. Well, and there's work. a threshold to bulking as well, to where you find yourself just bloated and gassy, <laughs> yeah. and you, your body is literally just fighting you throughout the entire process. And, and it's you don't have to keep pushing and driving, uh, you know, uh, you know, going through that process of pain and, and anguish uh, to make it happen. Like you can kind of bring it back and step out a bit and, and make sure your body uh, responds the way you want it to by just interrupting that. Yes. It's funny because you're, you're, what you're saying is the body is sitting there trying to give you all these signals that yeah. you need to go. The Just other ignore way. them. Yeah, but you ignore them because of your insecurities. But I, I really like, though, the, I mean, the original, I wanted to add to it, but your original tip uh, with somebody trying to uh, lose weight. I remember this being a really challenging conversation, right? So person sits in front of me. Super They've hard. been struggling with weight loss their whole life. Yeah, I know you want to lose weight, but we're right, going to make They've yo-yo <laughs> dieted up and down. Yeah. They've tried all these different diets. Uh, I, I assess the way they're currently eating and their goals, and they, they want to say, let's say, lose 50 plus pounds or whatever. And I go, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase your calories. 
and they they freak out because they're just like, that's not why I'm hiring you. But the truth is, the people that hire me at that stage, most of them have already tried dieting on their own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what the diets look like are crash diets where they restrict calories like crazy and they you know do cardio and they do everything they can. And they've completely slowed their metabolism down. So I get somebody who is 230, 250 plus pounds and they're eating 1500 calories. And they're like, yeah, where are we going to go? Yeah, like we can't, we can't cut for. And even if they, let's say they're at still at 2,200, 2,200 calories for someone who's 250 plus pounds is a very low. You're going to end up at 1,200 calories. That's right. That's so. You know, when I see that, I go, okay. And that's you have to be able to uh, articulate that to somebody and say, you, you want to know what I used to say, yeah. which was kind of a, a trick. And it's not really a trick. I think as a coach, you have to figure out how to communicate certain things because. What you're talking about is such an uphill battle. And sometimes the most convincing coach and trainer, you're just not going to convince the person. So what I would say to people is, I'm not going to worry about your nutrition yet. Right now, we're just going to work out and we're going to take this one step at a time. And the reason why I would say that is I know that if I said that, then most likely they're going to eat at least at maintenance or a surplus. Right. And it gives me the opportunity to build strength and muscle and metabolism. And then three months later down the line, then we can start to talk about. Yeah. I'm always that. trying to have them focus on rebuilding the body first, like building the body up. And, and so it just works better. And, and I think that's, that's totally not something somebody coming in for weight loss is ever going to focus on. And that's, you know, as a coach, it's, you know, if you can get them to get into that mentality so that later on the weight loss process becomes so much more effective and it sticks longer. So I would, I would, uh, focus on something that I, I I'm trying to increase. Normally when you get someone like that, they are, you know, most common thing, either under consuming protein, uh, under consuming, uh, fiber, under consuming, potentially healthy fats normally. One, and so instead of even talking about calories, I go the direction of, Oh wow, we need to increase protein yeah. because we need to build muscle. And I would make yeah. the case for speeding the metabolism up. So I wouldn't, I too would not focus on, Hey, I'm going to make you eat lots more. Cause that would freak someone like that out. Right. You just say, Hey, I assess the diet and we definitely need to increase protein intake. So I would focus there knowing that I'm also bumping calories exactly. a tiny bit, but I'm not really telling them that all I'm doing is like, Hey, we need more fiber or we need more protein or we need more healthy fats yep. in your diet. And they don't really look at it. Like I'm telling them they need to eat more food and they don't freak out. Yeah, no. Mm. Speaking of the bulk thing, like what you said, Justin, I mean, I'll, I'll give you guys my personal, I, I ignored all my body signals forever because I was so hard headed about it. I, I there think was, we all did in here. Bro, dude. At we one had, point, this I is think true. Everybody does. Yeah. I, I remember this at one point, the, the breakfast I would have. So I was a, probably a senior in high school. This is when I was like all in, like this is going to happen. Right. And my breakfast consisted of a punch bowl <laughs> of Cheerios. So this was like uh, maybe a quart of whole milk in order to make this happen. 12 egg uh, scrambled. So 12 eggs scrambled. And then on the way to school, toast and bananas. This is what I would have for breakfast. I feel bad for the kid that sat behind you. Oh, dude. Uh, Let me class. You. I would Oof. sit. I'd be in school. I, uh, <laughs> holding it together, you know? Oh, yeah. Keep it down. Oh, Keep I did the down. same, but it was with uh, uh, like the like the beach scooper uh, oh, size of protein gainers? powder, weight gainer, oh. and then add in like five egg yolks and then also peanut butter on top of that and just rumbles all day long. Yeah. Like, especially after I work out, it was and just gas. Dropping heat yeah, in, just in the classroom. Yeah, just heat everywhere. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I want to talk to you guys about a scientific phenomenon that I think uh, we now have some pretty clear evidence. So scientific. for a long time, this has been observed, <laughs> yeah. speculated, a lot of anecdotes. Yeah. But I think now we have hard evidence that mm. BDE is a real <laughs> thing. Yeah. B you big e dick energy? Big dick energy. Okay, so <laughs> what uh, spawned this research? Bro, Pete Davidson. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Hold on a second. A, that is a good example. That dude has to have a ginormous I mean, dick, dude. Something. I'm convinced. Hold on a second. He dated Ariana Grande, uh, Kate Beckinsale. I didn't even know this. I saw that meme that's flying around right now. Yeah. It's like four like the hottest chicks out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kim Kardashian and who else is was he, it? Megan Fox too or something? Yeah, like, Video, like what? what? There's, mm. there's like four. There's like four of like the. I like, don't know, dude. This guy looks like a creature. Yeah, you know, and he's not really <laughs> yeah. that funny. No, so there's got to be another factor. No, listen, I don't want to talk shit. He's okay? got that. No, I will talk shit. I think he's not funny. I just, I don't want to talk shit. <laughs> but here's the deal: he doesn't look healthy. Like if you yeah, look at no, he's like he's dark like, circles under like his eyes. something's not right. Yeah, yeah. So it's either when you see that. What do you? Okay, so what do you guys? We're gonna speculate and probably fucking cause some shit here. It so can't be just having a, a a massive dick. That can't be the only thing. Sure, it can. No, that's it, dude. You that's can. it. I mean, that's I would think really. So. And he's famous. I guess he's got money and whatnot. Yeah, so but all these women factor. are famous too. I mean, yeah, Kate Beckinsale right? yeah. could have hooked up with anybody. 
right? For why, sure. Why, yeah, so, but aren't, aren't most like typically like most famous actors and stuff like that like smaller in stature, and it's like they're not normally like big guys, and he's kind of an anomaly too because he's not a real big guy, but he's probably packing. Like isn't that like most most of you know your, what I think most actors that, are like your little like at least in my my school and growing up is like little drama guys they're little you know yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and they they put like little they they shoot them from the angle down up yeah so like they Tom look, Cruise yeah and then yeah. you see him in real life and they're like little little dudes so he's probably a little bit of an anomaly in the acting comedy circuit I would think no no, no. here's what I, you well, any you do you guys have any friends that are just like super ugly but would just pull like amazingly beautiful girls yes but they had tremendous charisma his charisma now he doesn't well I don't know I had one no I have a I have a buddy who heat. like yeah he's he, he lays pipe and he doesn't <laughs> yeah, yeah. like he's like and he's he's 510 I won't say his name I won't put him on blast he's just got an anaconda well, it's actually I mean it's not like putting him on blast it's like <laughs> yeah. he uh, and for the longest time, and I know we were friends forever. I, and I, I didn't know that till way, or, way later. And he's, you know, he's kind of on the goofier side. And you guys and, went to the locker room together. And uh, just <laughs> and girls, just, holy shit, girls absolutely love him. You know? They just absolutely love him. It was way later that I so, find it. When we moved in together, we lived together. So here's my theory. Out, so here's mm. my theory. Yeah, he's probably packing heat. Okay, that's fine. I don't think that's all of it though. Here's my theory. So su studies actually show this: that if you walk into a room and you want to attract other women. The most effective thing you could do is walk in with another really attractive woman. Oh, yeah. This makes you immediately attractive. Women want to talk to you or whatever. This is, they've done studies on this. So here's what I think. I think he, he tricked pulled one. Yes. yes. He tricked the first one, right? Yes. Oh, it was no Kate that Beckinsale. That does happen. They're, it was Kate Beckinsale. A phenomenon. And then all the other women are like, Kate Beckinsale, why are they with, why is she with that troll? Like, so I, I imagine I imagine like being a celebrity at that level is like a like you know, it's like a You know that or they're bored banging. No, I think dude. it's like a club. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like if, I mean you did any of you go to a small school? I went to a small school for a while, right? Yeah, okay. And you eventually yeah, nice school, it's such a small club. You ran out of options or what? Well, yeah, you end up you all end up dating the same girls and people. You know, the classroom and expect yeah. if you like I went through a K through eighth. You see, and I was there from uh fourth grade all the way to eighth grade with that same group of people. And that's you know, fourth grade, my first girlfriend. So you're you oh, have girl yeah. so by the time you get to eighth grade, you've all dated the same kind of circle of Stacey. people. Stacey. Yeah, every, yeah, Stacey. yeah, everyone's I mean, everyone dated it was Stacey. Just you like, come on, you too? Dude. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> right. So I I think like uh celebrity is such an intimate group of people that eventually gets around like, you know, what's what's his name? So what, he's down the list, he's on the bottom of the list? Well no, he's uh, on, I went through the whole no, list. No, he's on he's the list. <laughs> he's on the list is the guy with the, the big package and then you know every you know at one point that cl that club of people can't be, dude want to find out for themselves like could it be really that is it really that big or is she just exaggerating oh my god i don't know the, yeah. the other thing i think is that he's he made a deal with satan you know what i mean like yeah. he's assigned well, he looks thing. Like for that. sure you know he's like listen <laughs> you can have my soul i just want to be able to bang whatever chick i want he's like done here you go and then yeah it's it. probably like this really Thanks, sweet satan. romantic guy who says all the right things so we don't even know we're talking shit right now oh yeah like, yeah he just he's has like, like, no, the, he's like the, the best the game you've ever heard well in you know what it is it's an anomaly of course we're speculating i don't know the guy right so but it's it's usually when you see something like that it's super generalized okay but usually well, wait, it's you, because the guy's a billionaire. Well, yeah, I was going to say, so you could rule out the money thing. Because yeah. they can go get money from any other celebrity. Kim Kardashian, or they have there's so money. many better looking uh, celebrities yeah. out there to choose from. Yeah, That's Kim Kardashian's got way more money than he does, right? He doesn't have a ton of money. So it can't be the money. Charisma, I've seen his stand-up. He sucks. He's not yeah. really good. He's not super good looking. Maybe it's the... B well, he potentially is like the... The life of the party. So now imagine this club, right? So they they all go to the same like parties and stuff like that. He's probably the dude who he's probably got an aura about him. He walks in and he's probably got mad confidence, even though he's see ugly what's as happening right now. If you were a girl, you'd want to date him right now because you want to find out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> see? Is a mystery yeah. factor. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. What's he doing? You watched that stupid show where the guy had like this top hat yes, purposely, dude. and he's just like he the pickup uses artist. That. Yeah, the pickup artist. Like maybe he's been hanging out with the pickup. Have you artist. seen that? I don't know. Uh -uh. You haven't seen this? Oh, oh my god, dude! It's the douchiest show I think I've ever watched. So he like he's this guy. He was a super nerd, and then he learned how to pick up chicks, and he teaches other. He teaches these doors. guys how to like nag out on on girls, and basically like he's like first you got to prey them on their insecurities, yeah. and then wear stupid outfits so they get attention, and it's just like cringe worthy. Yeah, really, you know, you know oh, what's yeah. funny about it? Now I don't know how. I mean, I, I think a, a confidence has a lot to. Do there he is right there. For sure. It. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, look at that stupid hat. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is a pickup what artist? An idiot. Hey, you yeah. know what's funny, though? What's funny is it worked. Now, I don't know how fake it was or produced. Well, I, I mean, okay. So in in high school, if you look at He's old so pictures eccentric. of me, you the way I dressed and the things I did, you'd probably be like, what the fuck? You wore a hat like that? I, not like that. 
That's that's a little that's a little. But I, <laughs> but I had I wore I wore like a top hat. I wore a, what? Yeah, I wore like a golfer's hat. <laughs> well, yeah, like, but it, bro, no, like, I had a thing. Yours was more authentic though. Like you would do that at school. You would do yeah. it, like this is like you know something. He goes to a club to to literally wait. fish and pray. Well, here's, on, wait, like, wait, 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 hold on a second. You wore a top hat. Yeah, bro. I, wore, I, I had a whole collection of all kinds of crazy hats, and I <laughs> did wore. You, like, hey, a, did you ride a unicycle? Like, no. <laughs> I, and got I, a monocle. Okay, so unpacking it now as an adult looking back. What I think it was was that if you have the confidence to be so different than everybody else, of and you and you don't and and don't don't get me wrong. Sure. Uh, initially, some kid would probably make fun of me, but that didn't wait. I didn't waver. I didn't go. Oh, someone teased me. Now the next day, you never see me yeah. wear it. I double, triple down. Yeah. You know, if you two if top you, hats, right? <laughs> if you tease me <laughs> about it, up. I'm rocking it. And so and and I because I think I carried myself that way. I attracted because I definitely I know I was not a good looking kid in school. I was not like I was skinny, crooked teeth, poor, drove a shitty car. Like I had all the things, and I was not your top athlete. I was. It's average. so hard to believe because yeah. you're so handsome. Man. Oh no, no, dude, yeah, yeah, you are. Does, I, yeah. We're on camera. You can't, can't lie. <clears throat> well, I'm I'm serious though. Like and uh, I and I definitely I I Adam dated. gets all shy when I say that. You notice yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his, his cheeks no. got a little red. I think I really think that it, that has a lot to do with it. Was probably having confidence. Yeah, you're especially in, in high school because everybody's so. Well, and I imagine, don't you imagine, like totally. celebrity life is kind of like being in high school. But I do. I feel like yeah. it's it's like. But that. I do I feel like that. it could backfire. Right? I feel like some kid listening right now is like, okay, Adam said. Okay, so it does. Be so different. My friends tried to as we got older. He's gonna dress up as a Pokemon. Listen, now. as we so, got older. Remember when I went? I, I told you, early on. If you've been listening to podcasts since the beginning, I used to talk about painting my toes all the time. At one point, uh, all my friends that used to make fun of me all went through a phase where they tried it because they saw. They're just like, oh, my God, do the thing that we all make fun of them for. So you're like, at the pool and girls would walk by or whatever, and they would see that and they would get their attention. It started a conversation. They, but yeah. they weren't just painting. They some, were French some girl, Some yeah. girl, yeah. Some girls would think, uh, oh, my Nobody's God, it's so cute. Some girls would try it, would, <laughs> would make fun of me at first. Please don't. But again, if I didn't waver when they make fun of me, it would start a conversation. Justin, Anyways, Justin yeah. tried to copy you, but the, they, they kicked him out of the. Yeah. Your method did not work for me. My, yeah. No, I had buddies I that tried it. Like, we don't have we don't have a sand, we don't have a sander strong enough to deal with this. <laughs> I had friends that yeah. tried it, and it, they failed miserably. But here's why: I watched it happen, and I watched why it failed miserably. It, it's not about the the toenail paint; yeah. it's about how you respond and react with of it. Of course, oh, yeah. and so they would do it, and then when they get made fun of, you would. See them, they just they would clam up, and like, they would oh, get, damn. Then yeah. they, they would or they would differ, like, oh, I lost a bet, or oh, you know, I'm just kidding around. Like yeah. they would they would get all nervous about it. I'm like, you can't do that. No, if you right. do that, then it's not going to work. You no, have confidence, to own it. Confidence is a big, a huge. Uh, that's a huge factor. Yeah, you're so peacocking. I, yeah, I was. So, so I didn't care either. I wasn't a style fashion. I didn't care. I, I just didn't care. But I was. I, I never. Yeah, it shows. I yeah, yeah exactly. we, we know. <laughs> and it, hey, have you guys seen my wife? Come on now. <laughs> no one's arguing. Worked. Or maybe or maybe in spite of you have a different method. That's just all. <laughs> but you know yeah. what? I didn't care. Of, I didn't care about expressing my opinions and right. talking about whatever. So yeah. we'd be in a crowd, and you know, I have a, a, a cousin, super good looking guy, and girls would always, you know, go to him right away. But then as the day would progress, I would because I wasn't afraid to talk about whatever or, or speak my mind. Yeah, yeah. Still, still, you have your own confidence in other things. Sure, sure. right, right. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Speaking of uh, confidence, uh, Justin, you need to be more confident yeah. about remembering to do commercials. Come on, man. You, okay. Why you were you responsible for Organifi's commercial today. Drop oh, the you, ball, I, did. I, I told you guys yesterday I'm going to bring it in. And, and here's the it? thing. We ran out because we I used it all here, and yeah. I have the rest of my house. We were supposed to start the pure kick again. Yeah. And we were supposed to have it ready for the, the next commercial Organifi, and we're failing them. Yeah. I was going to say, number hey, one let's partner. lie. Adam's like so sharp today, and not like, but just, you know, I wouldn't be able to <laughs> pull it off because obviously you're you know just was gonna lie yeah. I'm a little cloudy today it's like, let's lie you guys <laughs> um no I, I i yeah i'm sorry i apologize that was that was on me uh now it, are you back to using it though consistently i am he okay. has it Personally. at home bro he hoarded it all uh, yeah i brought that's it all why we don't have it and i was and that's the thing like that's probably one of my most consistent supplements that i use and and you guys you know, like we'll talk about creatine. I'm actually going to start taking more creatine again yeah. too, but I haven't taken it in years. Like, so there's just certain supplements that, um, you know, I, I, I do well with, and this is definitely one of those in terms of like right now, like I'm trying to recall information. I'm trying to stay focused. And this is one of those things that's just helped me. No, we've work. all talked about how much it makes a difference. In fact, if I was the producer of the show, I'd probably have it ready for my yep. hosts all the yep. time yeah. because I care about the production. Of so the let's show put this on Doug. Is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Doug's fault. 
uh, trying to help yeah, you out, bro. For yes. not like sending me a reminder. <laughs> God, we're so useless with uh, uh, so remembering. Hey, you know what though? <laughs> Justin's like a squirrel. You know, he he takes all the supply, all the pure yeah. for the winter, yeah. and we yeah. don't have any left. And I'm also or like the dog, like a squirrel yeah. too. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm like the dog that if you say squirrel, I'm like squirrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. It's true. By the way, don't poke at Doug too much. I've seen him get pissed off not that long ago. The guy will. Yeah, <laughs> he flipped on you. Oh again? yeah, dude, it was great. It was a, we had some technical difficulties up in Truckee. And I was like oh, frustrated God. about it. Yeah. And he started getting really mad. And I saw that side of Doug that I never want to see because I've seen mm. it once before. So I was like, oh, I better back down before he yeah. kills me. <laughs> you can't poke the bear. Too People much. Hey, no. I'm easy going, but uh, I do have a threshold. Doug will murder everyone. He's well, like, I imagine, he's like, he's like I imagine when badger. you're like that, right? So, And you probably obviously experienced this, right, Doug? Because you, you do, I think, have an incredibly long fuse. And I, I think but, it's, mm-hmm. but it's connected to a nuke. Well, yeah. Like, <laughs> I think that's what happens with people like this, right? Like you put up with a lot more. I'm sick of you, your you shit. Kinda don't, you kind of don't. You you don't rock the boat hardly ever. Yeah, that's true. But it, it, if it compounds enough it. at just the keep, right time, burying it, then you don't really have like a a, a warm, hotter, hot. No, right I'm hot to, or cold. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So, was, <laughs> so, so I'm just warning you. The jokes. Well, you would yeah. think by now, shame on you, you would think by now, okay, as long as we've all been together, everybody knows each other's yeah, life. No, listen, like, I heaven love- forbid we fuck with your fucking eating schedule or your workout hey, schedule. Hey, hold on a second. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> heaven forbid that. I, in fact, since we're calling, talking shit right now, let's just bring this out right now. <laughs> yeah. So we have Vicky in the morning who cuts all of our hairs on Monday, yeah. our hair on Monday, right? <laughs> and there's there's a there's a normal order to it that's just as naturally happened. Yeah. I'm first, ironically, even though I have the longest drive to get here, I have to be the first one, so I have to get up an extra hour. And you have the, so the longest haircut, right? Which, uh, yeah, is ironic sense. too. Yeah. <laughs> so it go, I go, I go first. Then, then normally Justin, and then and then Sal goes. Yeah. And you know, there's been a couple times where Justin and then also I have been caught in traffic and accident or with that. And this Late guy over work, here basically. will make Vicky sit and wait Real for an hour all by herself instead of ruining his. It's work, usually his like workout. twenty minutes. <laughs> And number two, Bro. number two. Well, my listen. biceps aren't pumped enough yeah, yet. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, yeah, listen. Dude, like- I'm glad we're doing this on the show. <laughs> pe- listen. <laughs> People listen to the show. They know. What do we say about your workouts? You make them rocks in your oh schedule. My God. I rocks. have a schedule workout. I'll miss a haircut. I got to do my workouts. Got to happen. Yeah. That's the only way it'll happen. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. It's worked out. Look at the hair. But you should know, Doug. Okay. When it comes to technical stuff, and if I mean nobody, uh, nobody is harder on him in, than himself when yeah. it comes to yep. making everything right. So when it doesn't go right, it's he's one of those. Justin's yeah. like this also. I've yeah. learned this from all the years we've been For together. Sure. If Justin fucks up on something or something doesn't go accordingly, I don't normally need to say anything because I already know he's probably beating himself up yeah, inside, torturing so, myself. Yeah. So yeah. if I if I put anything on him on top of that, yeah. it's like also. Like, oh, so Justin, yeah, looks no, me, me and Doug relate quite a bit. Yeah, yeah we do. It's like, yeah, you guys are upset. a lot. Like, actually, you know, the more I think about it, I'm, we're talking about it, you guys are a lot like each other when it comes to that stuff. Well, yeah, he's he, you're the youngest, right, Doug? You yep. got an older brother? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I think that plays a factor. <laughs> I am the youngest, oldest. as a matter of fact. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I find that people who are firstborns tend to be very... Uh, they think they know a lot of things. Overbearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, did, what, did, what, did Doug, what was that like, interview video? Like, I got the answer yeah, as Adam, always. Adam yeah. Being the oldest thinks that he, he has a lot to say and these people want to hear. <laughs> and we, we listen. We listen. And we're like, I think you're wrong. Yeah. You know, and then I'll, I'll show you, but I'll, I'll hey, wait for my moment. Hey, I wonder what they say when we leave. The, I know, what, you know sometimes you and I, you and I have these huge blowouts. Oh, me and Doug can spiral. I wonder when we leave. What they, they I already, these. I know you all talk shit all the time. I say, these guys are always like, if I get all frustrated, so they all go, he's on one Grumpy Adams. Yeah. No, you're just a a little moody, but that's about it. That's oh, about yeah, it. moody. That's a better. That's yeah. a better description. Bro- brooding is what they say for guys who, have, who are moody. I just say moody. That's, broody. Is that really that's a thing? Brooding. Is, yeah, that's what they say for guys, which is kind of funny. But it really is just you're being. You know, it's a guy being moody. Like, mm, I've never oh. even heard. He's that so before. mysterious. No, he's just moody. Oh. Just Isn't that, touch me, but that's like a look on the face, right? When you're watching movies and they do this, like, mm. yeah. Oh my God, it's so funny. You just reminded me. So I was, I was talking to my daughter, right? So on her iPad, she had a picture of. Who's the guy that plays the the, the new Spider Man? The, oh, not, the, the last one. Uh, What's his name? Yeah, the young guy. Uh, What's it? Look I don't him know up. His name, uh, anyway, Toby. No, Toby? not Toby McGuire. That's, that's that was the one before him. So yeah, I can't remember his name. But anyway, she had him on there. So <laughs> I'm teasing her like, "Oh, you think he's you know he's your crush or whatever?" She's like, "No, he's not." You know, we're doing this whole thing back and forth. Anyway, like, I'm really into spiders. And yeah, anyway, so I was teasing her. So. I, uh, what's his name? Tom Holland. There he is. That's not a bad. You know, that's not a bad guy. Damn, those are all the Spider Mans. No, no, these three. Oh. I think here. Neil Patrick oh. Harris was never a Spider Man. 
But anyway, so we're we're later on, right? So I'm teasing her, or whatever, and we're you know, and I tell her, listen, I'm just kidding, or whatever. I said, you just got to date. Make sure you date a guy like your father, right? And she's like, oh, okay. So date a guy that speeds all the time in the car. That's what she said. Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, oh, wow. oh man. But she's right. You know what I mean? Their perspective is always so funny. It's well, like what they hold on to. Well, so I was thinking about this, right? Because I feel like such an asshole. I was thinking about this. I'm like. What if she does date some jerk who drives hella recklessly in his car and she's used to it because her dad drives like an asshole? So yeah. Like, God oh, damn it. I got to change this. Right Someone around. needs to bring back the, the the kids say the darndest thing, that show or whatever like that. Obviously, it was Bill Cosby before, yeah, so without, we can't do that. Yeah, with different hosts anymore, time. Is, <laughs> if we could find somebody, somebody else. a little more wholesome. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Sleepy Time yeah. with Bill Cosby. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, well, that was such a good show, though, right? It, it was, was hilarious. I can't, I can't believe they haven't done another one like that. I thought it was hilarious when they interview the kids like like that and they would say the, the darndest kids things. Kids are great, dude. I had a client No once. filter, that's why. Yeah. I, I know I had a client once where his, his daughter, he went to go wake her up in the morning. She was like three years old and he's like, hey honey, wake up. And she looks at him and she goes, your face smells. There's something so attractive and pure about radical honesty. When you meet some, and that could be, a, and it's rare to find it in adults, right? Yeah. So it's so it's yeah. so pure in children because yeah. they don't know better, uh -huh. right? They don't know if they're a, what, a, if, how, what it is to offend somebody or they're not thinking that way. They don't process it that way. So it's so cool. But then it, it for some reason, we tend to lose that as we get yeah. older and, and people tend well, to- Well, I was talking to Courtney about this because we were, I was um, describing a lot of my friends that are still friends now and the ones that have left. And, and the ones that are still my friends are the ones that are like super blatantly honest and like tell me like, you know, stuff that, that might be offensive or piss me off. Or but I just, I know who I'm dealing with. You know, yeah. and it's well, that's like, like your friend. Who, who, what was the name of your friend that I, I hit it off with at the party? I was oh, Bo. Yeah, like yeah. I just, I, like I, I'm immediately drawn. We could have different political, social. Uh, yeah, but you know what you're dealing with. But yeah, yeah but I, I just, I love somebody who, who embodies that radical honesty that's not afraid to say their mind. And there's a there's a line there too because well, you you're not an people. asshole. It doesn't yeah, mean like exactly. you just you say rude shit all the time. It's like you can you can be very honest, but also yeah. empathetic and, and consider uh, someone's feelings. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So let's say your wife <laughs> comes up to you and she's like, "Hey, does this?" Does this dress make me look kind of fat? And let's say it does. Would you say yes? Would you? Would, no, you are say. You, are you at really way. asking me that? Yeah, for Dad, real. Haven't you heard Katrina talk about that before? No. What oh, you say? haven't? No. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Adam would say. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I'm brutally honest yeah. with stuff like that. I, she doesn't even have to ask me. She'll walk out in an outfit. I'll be like, you can't wear those shoes with that. No, <laughs> no yeah, you see, don't. see, I, I would. Uh, say, you never asked Katrina this. Dude, me and Courtney are the same, but yeah. I would, I would say it in a way where I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, that one's just not as flattering on you. You know, mm. it's so I kind of screwed around. The, so I probably uh, started like that, but we've been together now for so long yeah, that I'm, I'm be, straight. I don't have yeah. time because I already know if I do that, then she'll kind of we'll go back and forth. Like, no, that you can't do that. That doesn't yeah. look good at all. Wow. Yeah. Did she no. say that to you? Um, not so much. I'm probably the more one who's more critical with that stuff. Oh, yeah. So but she what she'll tell you is that it, it's initially annoying, but she also loves that that part. Mm -hmm. Like because then she knows too. Like I'm not. If I tell her, oh, she looks pretty today, or I say something like that, she goes, she goes, I know he's not bullshitting me. No. <laughs> no, you'll be the first to tell me it doesn't look right. good if it doesn't. No, look good. Got, it has got weight an, to it. I've got an argument with Jessica over this early when we first started dating because she remember she used to tra she traveled a lot when she used to work for uh, the Cirque du Soleil, mm -hmm. and other countries have different kind of standards. So like in Brazil. Evening wear or bikinis, they're mu they're they're much less. Uh, I don't know. They wouldn't seem appropriate, right? If you wore them in the U.S., but because of the standards are different. So she had all these like dresses and stuff, and she puts one on, and I'm like, "Honey, that's like see through. I can see everything. <laughs> like it's too yeah. sexy." Yeah, and she gets all like, "What do you mean? Don't tell me what." I'm like, "Honey, listen. Literally, I can see everything. You know what I mean? Like it's cool, but I don't think we should go to my parents' house. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna keep you here <laughs> yeah. wearing that dress. You know what I'm saying? That's not something we should see. Now that's interesting because that's you probably would be all for it if it was somewhere else." But it's because it's mom and dad's house. Yeah, it, it, and it depends where we're at. Like you know, like a, like a thong bikini at the apartment complex pool with family. Like that might be something that we don't want to do, right? right. <laughs> Versus going to. I love even how you're presenting it right now. Yeah, no, that actually, knowing she's gonna listen, right? She she's knows, like, dude. Yeah, probably, honey, we wouldn't want to do. No, that. we had whole, in this. We situation. had a whole conversation about it. I was like, "What's the big deal?" Or whatever. Like, uh, there's like yeah. kids and dads out there. The moms are not gonna like us if you go out there. Where the you know, I, I I don't know where I like where it even started from. But I also love when I when you see a couple who's been together for like 30, 40 years. Yeah. 
and you hear them the way it's they, the best. It, yeah, it really is. Where it's just like they're. It, it's almost like Dude, they're more. My parents are great, right? So when I was a meld kid, into one mind. When, yeah. when I was a kid, I mean, like any any married couple, there were arguments and fights over certain things, and there's these, you know, I don't know what they call them, but these uh, issues that don't go away, right? So if you look at couples that get in big fights, like all couples do, over certain things, it's usually the same kind of thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it was like that with my parents too. Well, I think when you've been married as long as my parents have, you just, you get over it and you could say shit about mm -hmm. each other and they're like, whatever. You laugh it off. That's well, the, the, the key. Yeah, so my dad will say something like, well, you know your mom, you know, she's not whatever. And, and that would normally have made her so upset, but she'll fire right back. Well, yeah, because your dad can't do that, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And they get over it and that's like, okay, that's how... That's how it works, you know? Yeah, anyway, yeah. I stuff. wanted to ask you, this is not on the agenda to talk about, but I, I just sent over something to you uh, recently, Sal, and it was a supplement company that's coming after yes. us uh, pretty aggressively. And it sounds interesting, but also sounds a little bullshit to me. But then I see the people that are connected to it that are backing it. There's a lot of big name people that are, are connected to it. Um, can, did you read enough to like kind of give me a little like short, I did. short an, version I of what, what it is and what it's supposed to do? I can't remember the exact name. I gotta look. It doesn't it up. matter. It does the supplement main doesn't matter? Well, I okay. care more about like what it was supposed to do and like it's like derived from like grapefruit. No, or pom some, pomegranate. Or pomegranate. So, yeah, there's this compound that. Okay, so here's the issue with the supplement space is you'll have a couple studies that will show there's some maybe something interesting we should look at a little deeper but because the compound isn't hasn't really been sold by other companies it sounds like the latest greatest thing and it's an opportunity to market the product now i'm not saying that's necessarily what's happening with this product but when i looked it up there wasn't a ton of research and so the claims were based off of kind of like a couple studies yeah and so that makes me always like kind of skeptical. Like so, I'd want to try it. Now first you say that, but I was the, on the pitch deck that they sent over to me. There is actually a chart of all the studies that have been done on it and the, the, how much it has like skyrocketed in the yeah, last Yeah. But year. I think there was only like a couple that were done on humans and, or, you know, human studies. Oh really? Yeah. So there's a lot of speculative kind of like, for example, <clears throat> let's say they do a study and they say, um, compound X increases, fat oxidation or whatever by, you know, 15%, which sounds, oh my God, you're going to burn more body fat. But then when you do a, a real study and you look at the real world results, things balance out and it doesn't result in any extra So then what loss. does it take for you when you're looking at new, I mean, we've, we've talked about, uh, one of the Tur Turkish stone and the, the other crazy one that you yeah. brought up early on. Like when you're looking at these supplements or these compounds, yeah. uh, what makes you go get excited? Like, oh wow, this actually has some p potential. I want to see a lot of either, uh, really good uh, evidence. So good studies done on humans uh, that, that are conducted well. I also like to see a lot of anecdote. So I don't I don't take anecdote and throw it out. A lot of people say, oh, I don't like anecdote. So well, here's the deal with that. There's compounds that have been used for hundreds or thousands of years, like some compounds you'll see in Chinese medicine or Vedic medicine that maybe right now doesn't have lots of studies, but if it's been used for 500 or 600 right, years. Right, because maybe we don't know the mechanism at which it's... Totally. You know. then, I'll, then, I'll be, you know, then I'll be like, oh, this might actually work. And then there's anecdote like, uh, you know, you'll see a supplement. There's a few studies that are kind of interesting, but then you'll go read the forums and people are like, oh my God, I totally feel this and it works. And then I'll also want to try it. I'll want to try it myself and see if this is something that I... Because usually I find when I try something, I can communicate it um, a lot better. For example, you brought up turkesterone or ectosterone. Yeah. Studies show that it works. The anecdotes talk about that it works. <clears throat> I've also taken it many, many times, and I know that after about 45 to 60 days, it stops working. So I'm able to communicate that if I were to sell a product like that, which no affiliation, we're not selling that product. Right. Also, we now know that it's mediated by the estrogen receptor, which makes me say, mm, I don't know if we'd want to recommend this to women. We don't know mm. what might be the effects on women. Who knows? So, uh, you know, that's it. That's basically it. I look at all those things, and then, of course, what do I always do? Have you guys try it? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, experiment on us. Well, yeah. you know what it is. Like, Adam. there's been a couple, a couple <clears throat> products. Like, uh, there's been certain synthetic, um, what are they called? Nootropics. Oh yeah. That I like. 
Right. Then I'll have you guys use it, and you guys will be like, "I got a headache." Exactly. Yeah. Didn't and a headache like, didn't didn't yeah resonate well with my gut. Yeah, I'll be like, "Screw that." You yeah. and I tend to be the same. I feel like the stuff that you that ends up. You and I are similar on a lot of stuff, yeah, except the for the real. nootropics. Sometimes they give you a headache, and they don't do that to me. Remember yeah. The, there's not a lot. There's actually that's why I think uh, you know uh, I like Pure so much is it's one of the few that I can take that doesn't. It feels like, healthy, doesn't it? Yeah. It doesn't feel. I like think it. all the synthetic ones just don't feel right on me. Like yeah. either it messes with my stomach, or I get these weird headaches from it. Yeah. I mean. Maybe one out of five, and I've taken it enough times to be to like okay. It's if I've had bad feelings from it yeah. more often than not, but because I'm so interested in yeah. yeah I've, I've, oh, we've I've tried, tried so many. We've tried a bunch of these new <laughs> tropics, yeah. And and again, that's that is. I think that's the main thing is if it's coming from natural sources, it just it just feels better. Uh, you know, the way that uh, my body reacts to it. Exactly. And uh, speaking of nootropics and smart people, so Elon Musk continues to be my favorite person uh, that I don't really know, right? My favorite celebrity. <laughs> In the world. In the world. Love that guy. Did you guys see his little Twitter battle with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren? Warren? Yeah. Oh, just recently? Bro. Uh -uh. So, so first of all, she's like, you know, <laughs> she's talking about Elon Musk and we need to pass laws so that pe people like Elon compare, you know, need to pay their pay fair, fair share. share. Even though he's paying... 10 billion. He's paying, he's going to pay more taxes. Like more taxes than anybody any in history. American, well, any any yeah, American history. billion or something like that, right? Yeah. Some crazy. 10 billion dollars. Which is right. hilarious that she would pick a fight with him. But then he's like, he goes, he goes, you're like, you're like, you know, uh, when I was a kid, like my friend's mom that just yells at everybody for no reason. And it makes it so, <laughs> so hilarious. But yeah, he hammered on her and he's paying the guys. And also, by the way, this whole like fair share thing, it goes both ways. Like, I did. I've done this before to people who've DM me, and I've said, "Listen, if you want to talk about fair share, Elon Musk has created tens of thousands of jobs, has innovated at his own expense, often incredible innovations in environmental research, in space travel, in you know cars and other technologies. How many jobs have you created? How much innovations have you done? You are not contributing your fair share to society. So it could flip yeah. both ways. Talk about pay your fair share." Where's your for fair share of contribution to society? Now, obviously, I'm not being serious about that, but if you're going to talk about you need to pay your fair share, look in the mirror. What have you done to help anybody? Yeah. And it's probably nothing in comparison to these hyper productive. Like what I've done is nothing compared to somebody like Elon Musk. I mean, he's this such a hyper productive person. He's innovated well, I don't more. do anything wrong. It's everybody else. It's a, yeah, exactly. So that's that's where we're at. Yeah. I just I just think that when you get people like this, um, you know, they have so much money that they could totally cash out and stop trying to do all this stuff. And I feel like and we would all suffer. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just like the the things that they have created. I mean, I saw the the Time Magazine. Like I forgot all the companies. Oh, that that's got. what it was. It was because he got Person of the Year. So she went and, yeah. and, and yeah. went after him for it. Yeah, and and then you look at all the incredible companies that he's created. It's like that those wouldn't exist if this guy decided to. She called him a freeloader. Dude. The, the irony of a politician yeah. calling an entrepreneur a freeloader is hilarious because yeah. politicians don't do anything no. and they get paid to do nothing. <clears throat> yeah. They're the definition of a, a freeloader. Yeah. So it was pretty ironic. Did that. you get a chance to go down the that kid that I sent over to you? I know you – did you oh, watch that one? Yeah, I did. A little bit. Really entertaining. Now, I just is, loved it. Is if this you, what's it, leading you to talk about like the, the whole gold and oil? And Is this – No, I mean it can. We can We can transition to that right now if you want to get there. But I mean I you just reminded me like this talk. Like that's like his – he makes these things. He calls them business essays. And they're these short 15 minute like mini documentaries that he does. And it's mostly, I mean, it's everything. He does uh, business, stocks, crypto, um, conspiracy theories. Uh, he talks a, a lot about all the stuff that we're talking about right now. And the kid's been on YouTube for a long time. I've been following him for like a year. And I just, I like the content. I like how he's doing it. I've never seen anybody do something like this. So he'll mm -hmm. take, he'll try and make a point. Like uh, like what what happened with all the money printing, right? Mm. He'll title it really cool. And he'll edit it, uh, edit up a really good 15 minute like synopsis on the history of how we got here. Like say from 1970. Oh, so here. it all makes sense. Yeah. No, it's real. it's very, it's, it's educational and it's informative mm -hmm. and it's entertaining. You know what I like about that is I feel like yeah. they, they, sometimes they purposely make things seem so complicated so that people go oh, i don't i don't understand how does inflation i don't get it when actually it's actually quite simple when you break it down yeah his, yeah. his name is jake tran okay. yes. everybody knows and that's mm -hmm. so the did you get a chance to look i know i, I did i watched one of his cool videos. right yeah really cool right i thought it was really i reached out to him hopefully we'll get connected i mean i've been talking to him back and forth in dm uh i know he's got a lot of things going on he's all over the place 
Um, but I, I would like to talk to him. I just find what he's doing really interesting. He's kind of a disruptor in his space too. And like his whole idea of like how he creates his content, I thought was pretty fascinating. That's interesting. Yeah, you'll like it. You have to go go, okay. go down. It's not like, uh, I mean, you're going to watch it. There's not, there's nothing I think that you're going to see. You'd be like, oh, I didn't know that. But the we, way he presents it. Yeah. Okay. I, like, yeah. so I look at it and why, why, why I was attracted to it was, you know, uh, Katrina's not really into t talking about economics and, and stuff, yeah. some of the stuff that I'm like more into, but I could see I could get her to watch some of that and her really enjoy it. And he simplifies it in a way that mm. the average person who may be not be into that as much I love could that. enjoy that. I yeah. love that. I used to watch uh, Learn Liberty is a great channel on YouTube and they do that really well with yeah. with controversial topics. And they'll break it down in like five minutes and you go, oh, okay, that makes you know perfect sense. So. You alluded to something though that I, I wanted to do and I asked Doug to, to look this up for me because I was listening to, I think this was on a podcast. I don't remember where I actually heard this first, but I thought it was interesting because I was wrong. Um, and they were saying that you know if you were to have put money in uh, oil, gold, or houses, so let's say like a quarter million dollars. So in, same amount in each of those. Yes, yeah, same amount in each of those or, and left in cash, which I'm sure everyone would, would predict that. In 1970, uh, what would what would be worth the most today? So I, you asked me this earlier, and I guessed oil, but the reason why I guessed oil is because you said in the 1970s. Yeah. And I thought, because I know in the 70s there was an oil embargo and oil skyrocketed, but then I forgot, of course, that it came back down. So I was wrong. It wasn't oil, but that's what I thought. Yeah, did you pull those up? I did. Give me, give me the breakdown, Doug. Yeah, so... Uh, it was against what I thought as well. So if you had a quarter million dollars in a house, in houses, yeah, you would have $4.1 million today. Wow. Okay. So that's 16X. If you had a quarter million dollars in oil, you would have $5.5 .5 million today, which is 22X. If you had $250,000 in gold, you'd have $12.375 wow. million dollars today, which is 49.5X. Wow. So- yeah. Look at gold in 1970 was $35.96 an ounce, and today it's 1779.80. Wow. And obviously, if you had cash, we would you would You'd be, be worth less. And cash, yeah, you would have basically nothing. And at the bet, by the way, at the bet, so all those things you said, I think 16 was the lowest, 16x. Even yeah. so, even if you invested your cash in like the best CD in the world back then, which was probably around six to eight percent, yeah, even that would still be way, way now less. Now let me, let me speculate the, on the some of this then, right? So oil, uh, I, at one point I think would have surpassed gold, but the difference is that in with oil we had new technologies like fracking, which made like for example we thought I don't know if you guys knew this, but scientists uh, and environmental uh, you know environmentalists said hey. We're going to run out of oil. We're going to hit peak oil in the early 80s. This was actually a big deal, and they talked about this. We're going to run out of oil. It's going to fuck everything up. We need oil. This is a terrible disaster just waiting to happen. The, 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 it never happened because, in fact, today we have more oil available to us now than we did in the 1970s, even though there's way more people on Earth and we're using more oil. And it's because of technologies like fracking and other technologies where we have access to more oil. So the price didn't explode like they like they thought it would, and we obviously didn't run out of oil. Houses, I, I can't really explain that one. Gold, I'm assuming, well, gold is limited. They're not mining more of it necessarily Well, that's faster. when we came off the gold standard, too. Yeah. So <clears throat> completely off the gold yeah. standard. Yeah, so that's when we, that's when we came off. There is, one, there is one component that's missing to that that would, would make me say that real estate still is number one. Because that, that what that doesn't factor in is of all those ones, that one could be cash flowing you. So you got right, gold you, is just sitting there, right? So if, so if, let's say you bought the house for so we said a quarter million. So say, let's say that actually bought it, which a quarter million dollar house back in 1970 was probably a pretty nice fucking house. Oh, that'd be an amazing house, right? Yeah. So that house could be getting rented out that entire time, and so you'd have to actually add that cash in addition to that, and what else that, that could have and what you could have done with that cash. That's right, all that stuff. So the also, house still wins, in my opinion, of all those. And the reason why I went down this, we were we you and I were talking about how sad it is right now that and a lot of people I don't even know really understand this that if you have let's say you've worked really hard for the last you know twenty years of your life to save let's say a hundred grand in your uh, bank account right now. Sitting in that a bank right now, it is losing money. Oh, at the end of the year, like rapidly. On average, mm -hmm. at the end of the year, your hundred thousand is worth ninety or less, depending on what you buy with it. And that's yeah, assuming you money. got it in some like a money market account where you're even getting a percent or something on yeah. that. You're still going to to lose. And so, simply parking it in something uh, like one of these investments, 
uh, you would be far better off yeah. than sitting at just in Now, the thing account. with property that's interesting, too, is that's median, right? So that's, that's the median. average in the that's U.S. That's not the average. That's it, the middle-priced house of all houses. Yes. And now, and, the, and as we know, real estate is all about location. So yeah. imagine if you took $250,000 and invested it in Manhattan or New York or San Jose, right, yeah. back in 1970. But that's not a fair way to compare. Sure. Like, yeah, a fair way is just to say what the median, a median house was at that time. So I had made a comment that $250,000 if you had it in 1970 and t compared to today, still $250,000 or less, of course, you got an interest. Yeah, but what's the value? So, but yeah, well, exactly. So I, I don't know what, say you got 5%, I don't know what that'd work out to be, but it's probably not the best thing to put your money into. It's no. just uh, cash investments. Um, but I was going to make one comment here on gold, uh, not gold, on oil. This year, the opening price was $47.62. And now it's seventy five oh four. Yeah. So wow. in, in a single year, we've seen it jump up a lot. Now you said something production. off air, and I wanted. Are you comfortable talking to me a little bit about the oil thing? Because I I, I was also listening to uh, Rich Dad um, podcast, Robert Kiyosaki, and I was you know he's famous for you know making millions of dollars and not paying taxes because he's constantly reinvesting and mm -hmm. and one of the things that they he's aggressively reinvesting in right now is oil and not just uh, oil barrels, but oil wells, yeah. because there's a massive deduction um, from the government from that. Like, mm -hmm. I think he say they invest a million and he gets 400,000 back on the write-off, not to mention that that oil, that, that well eventually could produce tons of oil, which then could also produce money, which also could go up. Mm -hmm. And so just sounded like a brilliant investment. I said that to you, Doug, and you actually piped in real quick and said, well, you can get fucked into doing that also. And I guess you you did this? I did this. Around 2000, I invested in a couple of speculative wells. And you know, according to the information I had at the time, these were supposed to be kind of sure things. Mm -hmm. um, I was obviously a novice, didn't know anything about it, so I put some money into it, and come to find out, both the wells ended up being dry, yeah. and I lost every penny I put so into I it. Have, so I had a few clients yeah. that did the same thing. So he, so the reason why there's such huge tax breaks and credits with oil is they often don't produce oil, so they're trying to encourage people to find more oil, and the cost of setting it up and the wells and the process is quite expensive. So it's a risky, now if it pays off, it pays off, and you do really well. So I, and I know somebody who paid off really well for. He had taken two million dollars of and his just money get checks. down in Mexico, yeah. and and yeah, then he's just, he's like getting like millions of dollars every year now from that initial like two million dollar investment, and he's, he's I mean he's filthy rich literally off of that one big move that he did. So, uh, but I hadn't heard somebody getting fucked like that where they went in and they did did something like that, and then it ends up being a dry So well. I had four clients that did it. Three of them got nothing, and one of them, Jim, you know Jim, mm -hmm. he was getting one of the wells that he invested in started to pay him checks, and he would just get a check in the mail for yeah. 10 grand, 15 grand. That's 20, how this guy would get Depending it. on how much. So uh, so that's, you know, anytime you see uh, like huge tax credits, you got to say, okay, why are they doing this? And, you know, what's Well, the, that's anytime you see huge tax credits like that that's because the government wants you to go invest money yeah. there for that for their benefit sure. right that's why they so we don't have to go other places they can get it from here so they incentivize people yep. in the u.s to go do that so yeah. i you know i totally understand why they incentivize yeah. you to do it man speaking of like all this investments and properties and you know back in the 70s where you know so i was uh, i went to go see my grand my grandfather now is 90 and we were hanging out a little bit and talking about what it was like when he came, when he first came to San Jose. So he came to San Jose, mm. uh, I want to say early 70s or late 60s. It was like all orchards and farmland. Yeah. Right? So this back is so, so San Jose, Silicon Valley right now. But back then it was all farmland yeah. in the far, and it was all farmland because they grew the, they grew the food that they would provide to the, I guess the naval base up in San Francisco. Mm. So it was all farmland, all whatever. And he was telling me about, his house that he still owns now it's in San Jose is probably worth 1.7, 1.8, which is a decent house in San Jose. It's not super big. It's just like average, you know, larger like track house. home. Yeah. Track home. It <laughs> is it crazy to the rest of America, yeah. but he told me how he chose to buy it. And there was another house that he almost bought. And the one that he chose was uh, $1,500 more. And you remember he was telling me the story. And by the way, I think he paid like $21,000 for it or something like that. And he's like, he remembers how much he struggled to make the decision to spend another $1,500 yeah. 
yeah. on a house. And then what he did to pay for this house, because remember, he came from Sicily, was very poor, lived in Venezuela for a while to try to make money as well. He worked as a custodian at a school, and then he would clean movie theaters at night. So he would go to work, come home at four, he would eat, my grandma would have food for him, seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night, or sometimes you know 10 or 11 o'clock at night when some of these theaters would close, he would go over there and he'd clean them and whatever. And he, this is how he worked for years to pay for this mortgage on a $21,000 house, crazy. which is really crazy. Is this your grandfather that you introduced Ned to? Oh, uh, yes. So so he's obviously older and he's, he's, you know, he's at the age now his health is starting to decline and so sleep is getting a little worse and he's got pain. He, Does he, he have arthritis and everything? He yeah, and, and you know, he's such an independent... My, my grandfather's a horse, literally. He's just so strong and so independent <clears throat> And the the shutdowns affected him and my grandma tremendously. I remember, this is kind of sad, but their health wasn't bad. Um, and I remember they were isolated for like six months or eight months because everybody was scared. We don't want to give them, you know, COVID or whatever. So we would drop groceries off at the front and food at the front. Nobody would see them. When we finally, you know, started seeing them again, their health had declined so quickly and I know it was because they were isolated and away from their families. And, and you could see the huge decline. Well, anyway, it's been like that a little bit. And so he's just, he's, he's not doing so well. He's, he's more tired. I've never seen my grandfather like this. He's the kind of guy that he would do all his yard work at 88 years old. And so I introduced him to Ned and uh, I said, here, try this out. And he goes, is this the weed? I said, no, no, no. I said, it's just the weed. It's just the weed. It's legal. So don't worry. You know, give it a sh- give it- <laughs> He's funny, right? He wasn't going to do it if it was the weed, right? right so right. say, here, you could try this out. Anyway, he tries, his, tries it out. And a week later, you know, he, he FaceTimes me, which is hilarious. My, my grandfather now knows how to use FaceTime. And he FaceTimed me and he's got like, he's emotional. He's an emotional man. So he's got a little bit of a tear, and he goes, Salvatore. I'm like, hey, what's up? No, no, you know, how's it going? He goes, I like it. You bring me another bottle? I said, yeah, I'll bring you more. Don't worry about it. I like it. Make me feel good. I said, good, I'll bring you some more. So, I feel like it would be like a really fucked up prank to like all of us get dressed in like black attire and stuff like that and like kick the door down and be like, where's the weed at, old man? <laughs> yeah. Hey, he would, sh- he, that would be a terrible, he would shoot you with a gun. That would be a terrible prank. It would backfire. If he would literally shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, hey, we know you, out. we yeah. know you have it. No. Yeah. Get the fuck out. Blam, blam, blam. You know? It's me. No, no. Oh. You know, no, no, don't play that prank on my grandfather. Uh, <laughs> He'll pull the trigger before you. Oh, I've no. seen him. He's so funny. When when I was younger, I was in high school, and there were these high school kids. So he's like takes so much pride in his in his his fruit plants and all his trees and whatever. And I swear to God, this is this is an Italian thing. So anybody watching who has like old school Italian family knows this. They could have the smallest yard. Every square inch of that yard is growing something, and it's tomatoes and pomegranates. Anyway, he even used the front yard this way. So every little square inch, he's growing food. But you know, the front yard, if people walk by on the sidewalk and they see, oh, I'm going to pick a lemon, or, and this used to fucking piss him off, dude. So <laughs> I remember I was, a, I, was a, I was probably a junior in high school. My cousin, Sepp, and I were over there, and we hear my grandfather outside just going off. So we run out there, and there's these like high school kids our age who had picked a few lemons. And so I'm like, you know, I'm telling him in Sicilian, I'm like, don't, you're going to get in trouble. Like, don't yell at their kids, you know, don't yell at them, whatever. So they leave. And so my grandfather looks at us and he goes, you're right, I get in trouble if I do something. He goes, if they pick again, you and your, you and your cousin, I want you to beat them up, okay? I said, no, no, I'm not going to beat someone up. <laughs> I'm not going to beat you someone up. You handle this? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to beat them up because they took your lemons, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I told, I didn't say that to him because he would have got mad. So I said, all right, well, don't worry, we'll take care of it next time. And I'm like, I looked at my cousin, I'm like, dude, we got to. You gotta make sure that these kids take his fruit. Do either one of you guys have somebody in your family that's like uh, as in, as into business and economics and stuff like that as you guys are that are older, wiser? Like, do you guys have that in your family at all? Anybody? You know, in my family, nobody. I, I have a lot of I, just... I have a lot of salespeople and a lot of entrepreneurs, but because they're so old school, they their mentality was very much work hard, spend little, and save. So I never learned investments. I don't learn how to buy properties. I don't learn any of that stuff. So I learned the basics, but I never learned anything. Well, more. I take that back on Courtney's side since they're my family now, right? Yeah. Uh, there's like her brother, and then um, uh, 
my brother-in-law to uh, the other one that's married to her sister, uh, very much into like financial investments and okay. just killing it. And so I'm always like riffing with them at what they're doing, like yeah. where they're parking their money, all that kind of stuff. Do you have people in your family with that, Doug? I do. My nephews are really into it. Oh, your nephews? Yeah. M- one of my nephews is actually really into crypto. I should actually talk to him more about oh, that. But oh, that's good. my sister, you know, she's really into it as well. She's always calling me up and talking about uh, different things that she's into. So it's great when you're a kid and you grow up around it. I think right. you learn it, you know, because I don't learn it. So I, I, I want to build that for my family, right? I like was just going to say, yeah. it's going to be so good because your your son's going to learn from you some really great. Because I learned, where do you learn this otherwise? You don't yeah. learn it in school. Yeah. Now, I do take it back. My cousins who are my age are all finance. I have so many family members that are financial advisors and they do investments. But the older generation, all they did was start businesses, save money. Yeah, you have so, a thread going with some of your cousins yeah. and stuff that that's all it is, right? Yeah. Just stock talk and business yeah, stuff, yeah. right? You want to know how funny it is, dude? I piss them off so bad because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm nothing. And I've made a few stock picks. I <laughs> see so you rubbing their face. Oh, and they talk <laughs> shit about them. <laughs> They've talked shit about you them. You crush them with it. Yeah, yeah, and I always bring them up, you know? Oh, Anytime they bring man. up advice. I don't know if I want to take your advice. salt in the wounds there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're like, shut up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I know that HubSpot bet of yours, man. That was one of the best ones. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was your Adam's pick, dude. still salty on yeah, that yeah. one. Dude. You didn't take you action on it. And Sal sent me a nice gift, right? Here's 50 bucks of your HubSpot you won the other day for my son. I was like, <laughs> oh, you motherfucker. It's hey. like you're throwing salt on the wound right there. He's got another gift gift coming by the way <laughs> by the way that pissed me off we bought we bought them that for christmas yeah. through was it stockpile yeah yeah and they were supposed to send it to you on christmas stupid idiots they sent it to you that oh, day you did, oh i didn't know you could do that where you could like uh, time it oh yeah oh, interesting what a, stupid you get it on the yeah i know the, i got the, it the, ran, the i got it randomly of, like last week i got like this i was like hey did you mean to send max fifty dollars towards hubspot right now and he's like yes that was supposed to be for christmas yeah. or like that well, we got him gotta, a couple things. Now you got to get him another gift, dude. So it yeah. doesn't, doesn't count. <laughs> Came early. <laughs> so annoying. Hey, real quick. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Look, if you have kids and you listen to this podcast, you're probably very interested in your children's health. Well, here's the problem. Kids food and baby food out there on the market is crap. It's terrible. It's got bad ingredients, full of preservatives and chemicals, not high in protein, not organic, but that's different than my Serenity Kids or Serenity Kids. They make some of the best products and baby food for children you'll find anywhere. We're talking about bone broth bases, uh, uh, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, no-grain puffs and snacks. This is the only baby food that I feed my one-year-old son. So it's great stuff. Go check them out. Head over to MySerenityKids.com and then use the code MP20 for 20% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from C Cuff Fitness. What's the difference between lifting steel plates versus bumper plates? Are there advantages and disadvantages to both for lifts such as squats, deadlifts, cleans, etc.? Yeah, you, you know, know, you know I, what's funny about that is you think like, oh, it's ways the same as no, but if you really break it down, there's a little bit of a difference. No, right? there's absolutely a little bit of a yeah. difference to it. And I also uh, I forget, you know, we're we're so more surface uh, area, that's for sure. Well, I, we're, we're so into this space for so long that you forget, like, if you were entering into... I would ask that question. Right. Like, yeah. like why are these people using rubber, you know, these bumper plates that bounce, and why are these other ones using iron, and, you know, is there a advantage to or one or the other? steel inserts, like the Olympic <clears throat> style, too. I mean, do, I, I, do you, I, mean I, prefer, I, I prefer certain ones for certain things. Yeah. Same so here. yeah. So I think I think I think for specific exercises, yeah. uh, ones are more valuable. I than like others. I like iron and steel plates for almost all lifts, mainly because I like the feel and the sound, and it's just it's nostalgic for me. But if I'm going to do something off the ground, if I'm going to do something where I'm dropping a weight, for sure, I want bumper plates. But yeah. if it's off the ground, a deadlift, I like bumper plates because even when I put the weight down, I like to have a little bit of bounce because the metal plates are just so jarring. And so loud. I'll tell you the plates I don't like, which I remember. Hexagon in the, plates. Yes, dude. Oh, fucking pissed me off. And every 24 hour fitness, too. It became a big thing, and the, the whole thing was oh, they don't roll, you yeah. know? But you do anything off the ground, it is dangerous. So you put yeah. a deadlift down with 
hexagon plates and one side's over here, one side's over there. It, yeah, it definitely throws off your entire trajectory of, yeah. of your, your bar path. Yeah. The, the bumper plates, the other thing I liked about them when they first came out was that the lighter plates were the same size as the heavier plates. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you look strong. Even yeah, really. I got five plates on the bar, but no, not really. Honestly, I think there's something to that, though, for you know some, especially beginner, intermediate lifters. It's like, it's psychological. You, you just piece. don't feel like such a, a complete wuss. Yeah. You know, it's funny, though. How many times have you heard this? I've actually seen memes like this where people are like i don't care what you say the metal plates are heavier than the bumper plates. oh some people swear by they do well i mean you can make a case for like uh old war rubber plates if you're slamming them on the ground they're gonna chip a little bit and the, yeah. the, the the rubber will fr but i mean what uh, an ounce yeah the other thing too is with bumper plates you can fit less of them on the bar so like uh like for example if i'm gonna do a deadlift or a hip thrust something where i can use quite a bit of weight I can't go past, I think five yeah. plates. Oh, that's that's the main reason why I like competition plates with the steel inserts instead. So you get sort of that hybrid where you can load. Uh, they stay skinny and they're pretty standardized. So each plate is almost like the same width. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, because it's so annoying if you're trying to do anything from the ground and it's like you get to four of those those bumper uh yeah. or those rubber plates and it's you're done especially the one here's the other ones i hate the the, the ones that back in the day the crossfitters would post which were the, they were not just rubber they were huge yeah. like they put like and they were 10 pounds or, or or 15 pounds they were this fat and it's like you know five plates on each side and it's only you know 95 pounds yeah, yeah. i think i because i'm not really i'm not doing a lot of um uh, Olympic type of moves like maybe Justin might do more of this like I, the only thing I'm really doing off the ground with the the barbell is the deadlift and I actually just like the first one a bumper plate so you could actually do the first one a bumper plate and then the rest iron because the bumper plates are normally a just little, a tad bit bigger yeah and that's all you need so when you slam it it slams the bumper and and you yeah. still get that iron clinging sound that you like you know which I agree I like that same for sound. sure for Olympic lifts like I want everything as close to me as possible like yeah. the, with that width it's just so clunky you know to have the, the the weight distributed way outside my body that okay that's a great point right so it will change the feel of the exercise because the weight starts to extend out past uh, with a longer lever. i noticed this longer with squatting lever. so i noticed i like squatting definitely with the skinny iron the skinnier the plate because it is close to my body and when it's all out there it and tends to have this more yeah. kind of bouncy left to right so i do 100 that for squat 100 it's yeah. and it, it, a lot of this is based off of feel like the, okay so yes definitely bumper plates if you're dropping the weights on the floor it's, it's safer it's not gonna break or make a, a crazy amount of noise you get thrown out of the gym yeah but there is a feel uh, aspect right like uh like for example I, I remember years ago i went to this old iron dungeon gym and it had the and i didn't realize how old this equipment it was until later when i became more educated on what how equipment changed over the years but this place literally had dumbbells and barbells where the dumbbell had a handle and then the ends were round iron balls. Like these must have been dumbbells from the 50s and 60s. And they had barbells that were like that. So, mm. And I didn't like the feel as much because the weight came out and it just felt different versus when they would have the, mm -hmm. the plates or whatever. Then later on, of course, you'd work out with the one with plates. And so it was like caveman dumbbells. Yeah, I've seen those. Those are crazy. Really weird. And they had barbells like that. They had this rack with barbells lined I up on it. Those. And they were all big, round, you know, cannonball ends yeah. on the barbells. And it was really weird. So old timey. It was. And not only was it like that, I remember this too. The handles. So rather than having a oh, uh, thick, right? They're well, huge. well, there was one like that, but they instead of just having a uh, you know the the straight bar all the way across, it was the bar, and then there were like it, there were like places where you're supposed to put your hands. Hmm. Now, what I didn't like about that was if you went wider or more narrow, it was kind of weird, mm -hmm. and if like half your hand was on the handle, it wouldn't feel very good. Oh, so yeah. you could tell that they when they created these, they were, they were like the, some of the first weights, you know, that they kind of. <laughs> it's put so out funny there. to see, like, if you look back, like how much technology has influenced now and, and upgraded a lot of just regular fitness equipment, like even barbells, you know, the ones that like spin and the ones that have flex in them, and yep. you know, like the Texas bars and some of those Olympic bars now, like I. I love that. Like, I love like how they've innovated like, a very simple thing like a barbell. Now, do you guys have a favorite uh, types of barbells and dumbbells and, and just for yourself? For I sure? really like, what, what was the brand that um, uh, Ben Pakulski had at his gym? Oh, yeah. I, I really like those. The, the, those kind of, with a, like a chrome chrome weights or whatever yes. that, yeah those dumbbells the, he had you remember there, those, yeah. yeah those dumbbells they, they really felt cool. really good yeah do you they remember did. the name of the brand 
Doug? I'm looking him up right now. Yeah, he'll, he'll let yeah. us know. I, you know what I really like that he had too? So back in the day, the first incline benches that were invented was a bench that you was inclined, up. but you didn't sit on anything. You stood up against it. And the way that people would work out is you would have to clean a weight. So there was no rack, right? So you'd clean the weight and then you'd lay back on this incline, do your press and then come forward. And of course, the limiting factor was like how much you could clean, right? Mm -hmm. Later on, they invented the incline bench that you sat in with the rack. Now, what he had, what Pakulski had, which I love, was a combination of both. Yeah. So you could stand back and have the rack. If you've ever done an incline press where you get to stand and plant your feet. You put your feet into it. Yeah. Oh, the feeling is so much better. I, I really like it because uh, it's actually, it's really challenging for me. I'm still not good at that technique with really grounding and dr using my leg dr my oh. leg drive. I just, I'm still not good at it. Like I'm, I have to actively get into the bench press and really think about loading my legs to, and, and using them or otherwise I've trained myself for so long of not using my legs in a bench press that that's something where when you're in that it forces that because you're standing up on them right so mm -hmm. they're you're you are already naturally in that position where you know when you do a bench press your legs are kind of behind wrap, wrap kind of behind you and you're trying to do that it just mm -hmm. doesn't feel as, as I don't feel like I can drive as well as I am when I'm standing up so I really like that's that why one. that's why I like it you, yeah. you you activate your CNS and you're much tighter with that is so, that the brand I think it might be. It's Watson Gym Equipment. Okay. They're yeah. from the UK. Oh, there's I a free right. free plug. Yeah. Free plug for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Send some our way. Yeah, it feels really good. You know, since we're on the topic, I like this is a fun topic for me. Um, machines. Do you guys have a favorite brand of machines that you that you've ever used? Hammer strikes. Yeah, I like hammer strikes. Really? Always liked it just because it's it's got like the plate loaded, mm. uh, and um, I just like the different angles they use a lot more so than. Uh, some of the other, but I mean, even there was some at, uh, what was that gym at the cyan gym? Mm. I'm trying to remember. Hoist what is name. really cool too. Um, the, uh, what they've done now with like leverage. I think those are pretty neat. They're interesting. Yeah. The, but I, I still, I, do I like so them. I, I don't necessarily have a favorite brand, but I do have favorite machines within a specific brand. For mm. example, the Nautilus old school Nautilus chain, not cable. It used the chain yeah. pullover machine. I have yet to ever use a pullover machine. That feels like that. And Nautilus had a couple pieces of equipment. They had this really awkward tricep extension machine. You'd have to squeeze in like this and put your elbows on these pads. Uh -huh. And then the top was like this. And it was you also use a chain. But oh my God, it was a it was like simulating a skull crusher. It was a great uh, mm -hmm. tricep exercise. And you won't find them with the chain anymore because I'm sure somebody got their finger in there. Probably lost their hand <laughs> lost their hand at some point. Next question is from Braden Kilgore. What is your favorite or most fun program to run? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you guys... Is, okay, so... Doug is anabolic. I think you you always go back to anabolic. Always go back. I, I, I would say, since we've been together, I have ran a MAPS aesthetic, MAPS performance has a baby program. It's like I, I, I meld the two of them together. Mm, yeah. Aesthetic is, is notoriously my favorite. I just like... That's just... It, it's the way I like to train the most. It's well, the it was I, based off of how you train when you right. So, right. so I'm obviously I'm biased, right? But I know how valuable uh, mobility is, and actually doing some of the movements that we've included in performance. So I tend to follow our programming around aesthetic, and then I intermittently use things from performance, and maybe a little bit of strong because there's some stuff in strong I really like. But that's, I would say, like, you my, know what's my really favorite. funny about that. We're, we're going to have like very similar responses. So, my, mine is definitely performance, is, is where I come back to quite a bit. But I use trigger sessions instead, <laughs> of, instead of the mobility sessions, only because the mobility part, I've, I've, dove, like, I dived into that for, right. you know, it's not a weakness here. It's just, yeah, it's, it's something moment. I always do anyway. <laughs> Uh, and so I just, I remember just doing the trigger sessions and that just blew my mind about, you know, how responsive my muscles were and how stronger I felt going back into the regular workouts uh, throughout the week. So I was like, I, I just love to incorporate those whenever I can. Yeah. I really, of course, MAPS Anabolic, I like that. Loved aesthetic and split, but one program surprised me because I followed it mainly just cause I, I want to follow programs that we write, especially when we create them with other people just to see you know, the nuances and what I want to change or whatever. Map Strong surprised me because- yeah, I run that every now and then. I it's like not, Map Strong. It's not like bodybuilder centric. I like that bodybuilder style workout. It's not really like that. But I got such great gains in muscle 
from following map strong and i was doing so many movements that i normally don't uh do in my workouts and it was phenomenal and it's the one that we tend to get a lot of feedback from people <laughs> we're like oh my god i built my back got bigger or my butt you know i built my butt on that program mm -hmm. uh, now right now i'm working on a and i don't i don't know what this will be called but it's kind of a an anabolic 2.0 that's just but nothing's out whatever i'm just kind of letting that out that it's something i'm working on and uh i'm in, I'm incorporating different aspects. It's a little more advanced version of anabolic. But. I was also surprised. I, I really enjoyed uh, running our MAPS powerlift. MAPS powerlift was oh, the yeah, first time yeah. I'd ever like trained that way before where I was like focused on the big lifts only and just kind of improving those. And uh, I mean, it's very well written. Uh, it, it just, uh, I think with Ben and us writing a program together, I think that was a great uh, collaboration and that program was a program that that I, one also gets a lot of good uh, yeah. reviews. I was surprised by the game. I wish I remember. I, I know I have them written somewhere. Um, Your squat exploded. Everything did. I mean, even my, I was I was really surprised. I wasn't anticipating that. I mean, you've been lifting as long as we've been lifting. You understand programming as well as we understand programming. So whenever I do anything, I don't uh, today. I don't like expect like major gain, like gaining five or 10 pounds in a lift is kind of a big deal, sure. you know? And I saw significantly more weight than that increased. I thought, I thought your squat went up like 30 pounds. Yeah, my squat went up quite, a, I think it was 30 or 50 actually. Uh, my bench went up a good 25 to 30 pounds. Like everything kind of went up on that. It was a really, and because I remember where I was. Now, granted, um, I wasn't uh, at the peak of my like training and I wasn't at, I wasn't already in PR place. I was coming back from like not training as consistently. So you gotta, you gotta take, take away some of that. Right. But all in all, that was, that one really surprised me. That one, that program surprised me. I really liked that one. But if I'm, if I would say my favorite, because I is, is aesthetic like, so mostly following the aesthetic layout with a blend of, of probably performance. And there's what, what mine are. Next question is from Mo Strength Gains. How much of a difference do maces and ending clubs make for joint stability? Oh, this is a lot. It yeah, makes a big difference. Impact. It does. And you know, and I never use these ever until meeting Justin. And then I started messing with and, I, and it, truth be told, I don't use them all the time, but I have used them, you know, for weeks, uh, you know, week stints or three week stints. And my best guess, and I'd love your input on this, Justin, mm -hmm. my best guess as to why it made my joints feel so good is because there is no resistance, no traditional resistance training movement that that really emulates that circular motion that's required, the momentum that you're controlling while you're moving a weight, which yeah. is very much like- Acceleration, deceleration, yeah. yeah, all of that are components that the muscle is you know, contracting and accounting for. Uh, and you have to be fluid with it too. So you have, it's, it's almost like you got to know when to tense and turn on the muscle and then also release and, and, uh, uh allow for that free flowing movement, uh, which then to, to control it is, is the other portion of it. So to stabilize, you know, movement is, uh, challenging for, for the muscle to account for. So it challenges a lot of what is, uh, your programming typically is devoid of. Uh, and it, what's really cool about it is instead of just uh, body weight, we always think of body weight with mobility, mm -hmm. right? And that's something that it, it's very impactful, it's effective, but then sort of we just move on, right? Uh, and, uh, and it's funny because I accidentally posted uh, like me doing some rotational movement uh, with weight. And, uh, and this was on like Instagram and, and it was like one of those feeds where it just, you know, anybody can comment on it. That's not a fan or doesn't follow us or whatever. And I was, I was getting all this grief, like rotational movements are stupid, wow. you know? Why? And it's like, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, obviously, you know, this was some jabroni out there that uh, has never <laughs> actually taken the time to, to work and develop the skill that it requires. And what's cool about it, what I'm getting at is that you can actually progress and, and be able to do more load and you can get stronger uh with these movements um and that's i i went through that whole process and got to a place where i can do that with substantial weight that i could swing around um that uh, beforehand if i picked it up i'd be worried that uh, something was going to break or something was going to give way uh, so I became pretty much of an evangelist for these because I, I just found out that was a strength I didn't know I could develop 
that also translated really well to stationary, you know, bilateral movements and, um, you know, especially bench press and overhead press. It, it helped substantially. I'll tell you what um, I loved about this. And I, you know, after Justin, because I didn't do it at all until we all met and I went on that kick on my mobility kick for that, you know, two years or whatever it was. And during that time, I also started to, to learn how to use the Indian clubs and the mace, the mace bell. And the thing that I loved about it, especially when you're doing it in conjunction with correctional work and like body weight mobility stuff, is once I, I, I had worked on like the thoracic and shoulder mobility and got it to a, a healthy place, then all I had to do was just swing the club or the mace around for a little while. So once I got to a place where now I was in, in a, a better, uh, you know, advantageous position for my shoulders and my neck and spine and, okay, I've, I've done all this. You now know, you just need to turn the muscles on. Yeah, I, I did all this laborious. Because let's be honest, I think the reason why most people don't stick with mobility is it's very laborious. So you're mm -hmm. sitting down and you're doing these like active stretches all the time for yeah. long. And it's just, you know, I know a lot of people that do it for a while and they just kind of fall off. And I was really religious about it for those two years. And then I started to advance it by getting into the clubs and the mace. And what I found was, oh, shit, now that I'm here and my joints ha have good mobility, all I need to do is grab that sucker before I go to my workout. And it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more fun swinging a mace club or an Indian club, right? Because there's a flow to it and it's kind of dynamic and you can increase the weight and actually progress it. So it kind of makes me feel like I'm lifting, even though I'm not like totally lifting like traditionally. You feel like biking. Right? Yeah, it yeah. feels cool, right? But it, now, now all I have to, like, I don't have to do the wall circles and the handcuff with rotation so long as I get in there and I do my yeah. mace swings and my Indian clubs. So it, it's more fun. It feels like it's faster to get to that place. I can progress it with the weight now. And it's, uh, so that to me, that was like the most attractive part about it was getting introduced to it uh, while I was learning to, uh, to work on my mobility. And now all I have to do is that. It's a lot like how I talk about my 90-90 in combat stretch. I had to do that. And that was extremely laborious and I it took me a long time to get there but now that I'm there all I got to do is do like a deep squat as long as I'm squatting really deep I I keep all those all those joints you know uh, mobile and able to take to that range of motion where I feel like that's the same thing with the mace and the Indian clubs is if you do the work and and you get to a place where you can actually sa safely swing it well, then that's all you got to do to well, keep now you've that. established the strength and control. Yes, you know, and it, 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 again to to be able to, it's just like when we talk about like mind muscle connection. First, you got to get the connection, and that's what the mobility piece really provides. But now you got to strengthen that, and this is a way to progressively strengthen that. And so, yeah, you can get to a point where you just pick up the club or you know the mace bell, and and you can stimulate the muscles, and then it contributes to the workout. Yeah, the, the mace works the core like nothing else a heavy mace swinging it behind your back you're you're getting an incredible whore workout but you know it's what's interesting is you know earlier in this uh in this podcast we talked about anecdote right and the value of it when it's been around for a long time indian clubs and mace uh exercises have been around for just as long as as dumbbells and barbells and maybe even longer, especially mace, right? Because you could probably go back and trace right, they, mace they training. They called Gata, I believe, the, yeah. yeah, back in uh, India. Yeah, and a lot of the wrestlers used it. Um, I mean, you could technically go and trace back mace-style training to like medieval times when they were swinging big swords mm -hmm. and having to practice then. Mm -hmm. And so when you find that people have found tremendous value over long periods of time of with training modalities, now you have what's called training wisdom, right? Now, what's funny is that some really smart marketers saw this old equipment, decided to bring it back, which was brilliant. That's actually a very smart strategy. Go back, find some old training techniques that were valued, bring them forward. Now they look like they're new training techniques, even though they were they were they've been you know tried and true for a long time, and you'll prov prov you know provide a tremendous amount of value, just like Pavel did with the uh, the kettlebells, yep. right? Yep. Tremendous value in Indian clubs and and maces. Incorporate those in your workouts, and they're going to provide to you value that you won't typically get out of traditional resistance training. So that, that's really the value. It's like, okay, why is it so effective? Because I can't think of a traditional resistance training exercise that that is is even close to doing the same thing. It's that different, right? But it's still resistance training. So that's kind of the beauty of it. Next question is from Lean H17. Is chronic stress a strong enough of a component to keep someone from achieving their fitness goals? Ooh, good question. Yeah. Okay, let's let's kind of let's break that down for a second. Is something that has been proven to dramatically increase uh, inflammatory markers or inflammation 
to increase all-cause mortality, increase risk of heart disease, cancer, insulin uh, issues like uh, sensitivity issues, diabetes, uh, raises cortisol, lowers testosterone, causes hormone imbalances in women. Could that possibly affect your results? In <laughs> well, when you, fra when you frame it like that, of course. Well, that's yeah. why I did that because- I know, but it's like someone asking, like if you drive 100 miles an hour, are, are, are you really likely to die? And it's like, well, when you say like- Way well, more likely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then if you frame it like, well, if you're driving like an asshole with your eyes closed at 100 miles no, an hour no. on rainy <laughs> roads, like, yeah, you're well, going- Well, look, it, it, the bottom line is that, that exercise is stress on your body. And if you're already high stress, throwing more stress at your body, now you're not going to respond whatsoever. And your body does some interesting things when it's under a lot of stress. When it's under a lot of stress, it is trying to survive and protect itself. So what does it do? It raises cortisol. What's so bad about cortisol? Nothing is bad about cortisol. You need it. But when it's this is what it does. It, it releases energy. So you burn more energy. It makes you not want to build muscle because building muscle means now your body requires more calories. So uh -uh, we don't want to do that. It'll encourage fat storage because fat storage is like your insurance, and it can it can lower your libido because throw why your, should I throw your hormone profile off? All of that, yeah, right. So and that's just that's just cortisol, right? Um, why would it lower testosterone? Well, if my body's under a lot of stress, why would it want me to procreate or be driven to procreate? Like let's not let's not make that happen, right? In women, you see other imbalances. Stress is a big one, and I, it's it will crush your gains if your stress is too high. It would absolutely destroy your body's ability to build muscle or even burn body. Well, and even if you're if you're seeing results in spite of it too, it, it's going to dramatically slow it down. And 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 gains and and uh, recomping your body is is a slow process already. Yeah, like it's not an overnight thing to change your body composition. So it's already this long, slow grind to get to your goal as it is. If you throw chronic stress on top of that, you I mean, even just making it 10 or 20 percent worse is a lot. And that and that I think that is I think to be honest with you, I think chronic stress is probably one of the main culprits that causes people to quit because they feel like they're doing the right things because they're reducing calories and they're training their body really hard but then they're not seeing the results yeah. they're not getting they're not getting the return on their investment they feel like they're putting all this work in but what they don't realize is they already have so much chronic stress in their life and they don't recognize that the way they exercise is also considered a stress and the one they're probably choosing is like the worst type of stress for their body, considering all the other things they're stressing. Mm -hmm. And so here they are putting in all this work. And I know there's somebody listening right now that could totally relate to this. You're sweating your ass off in your work. You're, you're consistent four or five days a week all the time. You make good food choices and your body just is not changing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the culprit is stress because you are just taking it from all other ends. And because we look at exercise and diet as healthy and good for us, you those both can be a stress. Eating in a calorie deficit is a stress. Right. Training your body hella hard is a stress. And if you're adding that on top of a very stressful life, you'll stall the fuck it's out of your results. It's a very strong results. signal. Yes. You know, it's, and it's a defensive signal to your body uh, you know, to preserve things, right, it, it, at all costs. So, uh, you know, sort of in this famine state where, you know, if I'm consuming something, I want to make sure I, I have adequate energy to, to to move forward with. And so, you know, that's a strong signal your body already produces to keep you alive. So, yeah. you know, it is a part of the equation for sure. Yeah, now it is important to to know that stress isn't bad. It's no, no. it's also not good. It's it could be either, and it's essential, right? So they've done studies on quality of life and and meaning and purpose. And what do they find when people do things that are more challenging, that cause more stress? For example, have kids. If you decide to have children, you can one hundred percent bet that your stress is going to increase. But you can also, this is according to the literature, bet that your qual that your sense of meaning and purpose will also increase. So studies will show that stress is essential to a meaningful life. Stress tells your body to improve and strengthen. Not having any stress would make you very weak uh, and uh, you, know, you, you would be more susceptible to disease. This is why hot, cold contrast, oh, my health improves when I do that. Well, you're it's stressing the body and causing it uh, to strengthen. Here's the other thing that we're not considering. How chronic stress, even if it did none of those things, so let's just imagine in a magic world where chronic stress didn't have negative p effects physiologically on you, it still affects your behaviors. 
So you can you will see that when people are chronically stressed, they're more likely to make poor food choices, for example. So I'm more likely to self-medicate with uh, sweet foods or junk food or things that I normally wouldn't choose or alcohol, right? I'm more likely to do those things. Chronic stress is could potentially make me more likely to choose inappropriate exercise for my body. So what I tend to see with clients is people who are chronically stressed will do one of two things with exercise. Either one, they'll choose a form of exercise that's too hard for them. Why? Because that extra cortisol makes them feel better in the moment, right? So the chronically stressed person, they're the most likely to do the spin classes and the orange theory and the circuit type training. Or it makes you not want to do anything. Oh, I can't even think straight. I want to do nothing. And so you're, you're, more, you're, you're less likely to choose appropriate types of workouts for your body. You're more likely to choose foods that are unhealthy, that aren't going to serve your fitness and health goals. So even if chronic stress had no effect on you physiologically, it 100% for sure has an effect on you behaviorally. So what's the key to all of this? I think the key number one is to be aware and then to help to place a little focus on management of stress. And well, all right, what does that look like? Well, you could do things that offset it, like turn off electronics and get off social media. By the way, this is a big one. Like I was talking to, I, was, I can't say who this person was, but I was talking to somebody who this is what they specialize in and they work with people uh, and they work through you know stress. They're like a therapist, right? And they said one of the number one things they do when they work with people who have lots of anxiety and stress, it's an easy first step is, is he says, I tell people to not go on social media and not watch the news just for a couple weeks just to see how you feel. So that's one stress management uh, strategy. Another one is gratitude. Gratitude, man, that makes a big difference. That's this, huge. this is probably why parents, again, with kids who are more stressed, less time, spend more money. Most parents, if you tell them, hey, would you trade your kids for you know not having them anymore? They'd say no, because they also bring this tremendous amount of gratitude. So it, 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 it reframes all those mm. things and makes them worthwhile and valuable. So I think that's another strategy. Yeah, because right? you can get caught in that loop of just constantly focusing on, you know, either what you don't have or what's not working, and then you just keep reinforcing that same thought process, which then just perpetuates uh, more stress to, to be accumulated as a result. Totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have fitness and health guides that can help you with almost fitness and health goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 